I'll be talking about ontologies, standards, and discoveries, and you uh, heard a lot about some of the data standards and uh, common infrastructure from Brian. For So, Brian, thank you for helping me out and laying out the foundation for all the work that uh, you will be hearing over the next uh, three, four days. So, just to get an idea, how many of you know what an ontology is? Whoa, everybody, so I don't have to talk about it. How many of you are breeders? Uh, kind of like 5, 10, 15. How many of you are IT people? Almost everybody, my goodness. How many of you are biologists? Uh, 50% kind of things. So yeah, uh, so I don't know about the online people, but uh, there's a good amount of people uh, over here representing IT, biology, and uh, uh, they understand what the data common standards are. So I'll take a m kind of a mile high view of uh, how uh, uh, information is being derived and being used uh, for various kinds of purposes. So I'm a trained biologist and a genomics person and uh, in biochemistry and doing uh, biology in my lab as well on uh, drought and salinity stress in various crops as well. Uh, but uh, while we are doing it, uh, I'll t tell you more about the genomics view of the uh, of the crops uh, that we are leading towards uh, how to build the sustainability and breed them for better traits um, a breeder may start with the genetic maps or, or or a genetic population on the very top that you're seeing it over here uh, okay over here and they might uh, go on to find out some qtls uh, and from the QTLs, they may be able to narrow it down to a region which has an overlapping set of genetic markers, or you might have some genes uh, that are associated with it. Uh, and it's possible that you may want to narrow down onto one or two genes that you are very re recently interested in. Uh, at that level, you have some information about the, how the genetic markers are segregating in your population, or how the what is the function of the genes, what is the phenotype of the genes, or the population that you are addressing at that point of time. But if you go finer detail, you may be able to see, hey, what are the exact point mutations that I'm interested in and how those. So that is how uh, uh, breeders are taking out over the data and new kinds of data coming from the GWAS and GBS data sets as well as the phenotyping platforms to quickly go and narrow down to the candidate genes in an accelerated way uh, from that perspective. But from a farmer's perspective, what you would be looking at, how can we, I get the, uh, the breeding lines very quickly into, the, into my fields, right? Or how can I investigate over here? And can I use the same traits and quality measures that you, do you scientists are using? Can I use it for my breeding trials or for my field trials? And also send you the data back as a citizen science, science uh, community that, hey, I'm already growing that plant and a population or that variety in my fields. And I have a yield data, I have the phenotyping or uh, plant uh, performance data. Can I feed it back into your community data sets as well? So uh, there could be a bigger uh, platforms that uh, CGI are planning to build or some other uh, data sets or other platforms that the community is having on the clouds. Can we share between each other all those kinds of things? Additional data stats uh, is how the phenotype is being measured or how the gene expression is being looking at for each individual gene. For in this case, for example, at different time series experiments, and you want to see some more detailed information. So everything is coming out to be at a point that you are building some hypotheses about what data sets are coming around. So here you're looking at several kinds of these things. Breeders would uh, ultimately go on to find which lines and parental lines are how these genetic markers are segregating uh, in either cassava, rice, maize, corn, or potato, sweet potato. These are the final detail level of uh, information that people are looking at. So over here, you're looking at the genes, uh, genetic stocks, as well as the population individuals. You're looking at the, what kind of mutation, you kind of a phenotypic scores and then uh, actual scores. These are, these are uh, your exact scores and then these are uh, kind of subjectives uh, that you're looking at. So you're getting data in all sorts of things. And here I'm saying zero on a scale of zero to nine, uh, with the zero being highly resistant. And uh, there's a diversity of data. You would, might also see the reverse way. Somebody might be calculating nine as the highly resistant as well. So there's a disparity of data as well that you were looking at. Uh, this was the hypothesis you narrowed down. 
what do I else do I know about all these things uh, in my other uh, populations or across the genera or if I across the clade? So you're going more wider into the evolutionary aspects and you start looking at, hey, how is this marker segregating and where this marker came from? Uh, for example, in this case, uh, what we looked at, this particular mutation was a recent mutation and uh, all the uh, wild alleles actually were resist resistant, for example, for a certain disease uh, that we are looking at. I'm not going to tell you what that is, so, but uh, this work was done in rice in my lab. So here's the major components. It's a complex figure, but just focus on the blocks. You're looking at a taxon, germplasm, stocks and populations. Uh, genes, pathways, synteny, if you're moving across the, across the genus or across the clades like uh, zea and corn and wheat, what do I know in rice? Can I translate it quickly into corn? Can I get some more information from wheat uh, as well as uh, other uh, uh, dicot crops as well? Uh, people are also handling that locus level, marker, QTLs, alleles, parmen, polymorphism, you name it and everything is there on this field that you're looking at. But all of these are connected but ultimately what you're looking at in terms of your application on the ground for the farmers or for your breeding trials is characteristics, how all these things contribute to this. So, so this is the section you're mainly looking at, uh, which we have. These are the ontologies, basically. A, oh, how does it work? There you go. So you're looking at the characteristics in the form of uh, trade ontology, gene ontology, uh, for defining for the cells uh, and molecular level and how the anatomy plant parts and growth stages are being affected. But all of these characteristics are dependent on how these plants and populations are grown. So your climate, environment, and treatments, as well as uh, the agro work that uh, Mather's group is trying to develop is the management practices and where they are grown and they are also associated with that uh, and the community practices. So everything is all coming all together in, in that. Uh, aspects and these are all the ontologies that we are talking about. So that poses all the kinds of challenges that you're looking at. Where is this data coming from? And uh, how do we track all these things? Uh, how to display all these things? These are the major questions that people are always asking uh, all the time and uh, there is a tremendous amount of data that's, that's present everywhere. But some more challenges come over here. Uh, we don't have an agreement or, or any, anything about all these things. What should we record? I don't even know. I know my best way, but somebody else may not agree with all those kinds of things, right? So there is, is there any standardization? Probably not. At some level, they may or may not be there, okay? Depending on the community you're talking to. Some well-funded communities may have better solutions. Some smaller communities may not have it. Or you end up into these kinds of challenges right that uh, i generated my experiment here's my data you go and take care of it i don't have to do anything with that right you handle it i'm done i'm leaving and uh, somebody will tell hey, i already done it why are you trying to reinvent that thing right and so but the quality may be different right the purpose may be different so these are the kinds of things that you're handling and what we have is in in order to address this is Many of these pieces of information are connected by the ontologies. And depending on the granularity of the data that you're looking at and the components, you may describe these things uh, using these ontologies. And anything that you're looking at in the yellow are being developed as part of the Plantium uh, project that we have with Elizabeth, myself, uh, group. And uh, we have a group in uh, uh, Berkeley Lab and uh, uh, Birmingham and uh, Aberystwyth. Uh, and that's all moving out. These are the ones building the very top level species neutral uh, ontologies and then the CO that you're looking at, those are very specific uh, crop specific work that Elizabeth's group is doing uh, together with a big data platform and the CGIAR. And uh, you will hear more about how we are extending this work to various other communities uh, from, uh, from uh, Lol Cooper and uh, from uh, Maria Angelique. They will be presenting and then uh, Austin Meyer will be presenting more on the plant stress ontology that we are building about the diseases and uh, treatments that people. Uh, okay. So here's the schema over the things that are happening. Data is being generated at different levels. Uh, they are being published in manuscripts. They are publishing in individual labs and LIMS uh, projects. Sometimes it's just paper notebooks uh, that you're looking at. Uh, you have community databases uh, and data archives as well. And then there are some systems level portals that are 
working even at a higher level of the databases uh, that we have. Okay, so there is some standardization, but we are trying to build back, uh, bring the data standards back into the scientific community, uh, and they should start using all those things through breeding platforms and things that you guys are developing. Okay, so where are the standards? And uh, I don't even use it. So those are the kinds of confusing questions that people will be asking all the time. And there are various, various differences that we are looking at. Uh, is people describe same things and differently, and they know how to describe it. Over here, what you, on your left-hand side, what you're looking at, everything is described for uh, fruit color, but they're talking about different names and things like that. So how does the computer know about discussing all these things that are, do, do they mean actually the same things? Uh, yes or no? So uh, is there a connected framework for doing all these kinds of stuff? And people are wondering whether we know about it or not. So what we've done is uh, we've worked with the crop ontology groups. Like for example, they may have their own uh, trade descriptor templates and their community are describing their uh, and annotating their data sets. But how do we translate and connect uh, between each other? So we are trying to create a reference ontologies in the Plantium. And what we are saying is that if every community maps their terminologies to the reference ontologies, for example, in the red. And then, for example, A equals B, and C equals B, and D equals B. That means A, B, and A, D, and E are also connected in some way. So that's the kind of network that we are trying to build uh, over here. Uh, so if you look at it here in terms of ontologies, so people don't have to build their own ontologies, right? So this sort of reference ontology work is already done on the top. Crop ontologies, trade descriptors are at this level, and if they map to the reference ontologies, once they are mapped, they automatically generate the trees for you, the ontology trees for you. You don't have to maintain uh, the work, and top-level work is already done by the experts for you. Right? So that's where we are entering into this space, uh, and uh, idea is cross-disciplinary community. Can we provide the tools and the platforms for everybody else to do all these things? Uh, I won't talk about much about these uh, data sets, but this was done on the 5,000 germplasm data set, 5,000 species worth of germplasm data from USDA GRIN. Uh, I don't know how many records were there, uh, but those were annotated uh, using ontologies. They came in standard format, like tabulated. Their traits were mapped onto the ontology terms, and all the data was mapped back into the Plantium database. Uh, it shows up over there. We have about 21 million annotations. Uh, for about 94 uh, species right now, and then those data sets are, people are able to search from any resolution that I showed you in my first slide, and then go back to the source as well. So how we are de delivering on the content is uh, majority ontologies, the reference ontologies that I told you about, those are all hosted on the Plantium Project's GitHub, and the GitHub is now being extended for crop ontology work as well so that we can maintain the revisions of all those ontologies, how you change them. Instead of keeping it on your desktop, you manage it over here and everybody. So all the editing uh, happens here with some of the trusted partners have the editing rights uh, on this thing, but community is able to ex access it anonymously uh, from that perspective. So this is a platform that is coming out to be for all the ontologies for plant biology that we are looking at. But on the other hand, we are also looking at how can we ask everybody else to start using these data sets. So either you take the ontologies and integrate directly into your, into your system, or the best way is to use the APIs uh, to access the ontologies. You can have the, you, there are good platforms like Brapi and AgriPortal are already building those kinds of stuff. Uh, all these ontologies are actually in AgriPortal as well. Uh, but we are the ones who are, have the source uh, available to us uh, where editing happens and the provisions of annotations are available as well as anonymously accessible through the APIs that we have, right? So the data is all available through APIs uh, for integration in your tools uh, and all the, all sorts of projects that we're looking at. So this is uh, an API coming from a Croc Cassava plant height uh, terminologies that we're looking at, okay? So I'll end over here. I think my time is up. But if you have any questions, keep writing them.